What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Uh, we've been talking about creature features this whole summer, and I don't think we could move on from creature features unless we talk about B movies. What? What? What movie are we talking about? Be- the bees. Beads? Bees? Bees? <laughs> I was genuinely confused. I was like, are we going to just start this over? <laughs> no, I just wanted just to do a joke. Break? <laughs> we'll see who brings in more, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about The Bees, released in 1978. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. We were going to do The Swarm <laughs> this week because mm-hmm. that came out, I think, the same, same year. year. But turns out The Swarm, there's two cuts of it. And the only one you can find anywhere is the extended version. It's two and a half hours long. Yeah, maybe if we weren't in the middle of a move, uh, yeah, that'd maybe. be a possibility. But maybe. oh yeah, people watching the video may be able to see emptier cubbies below the kill count screen frame. Yeah, as everything in our apartment slowly gets boxed up. It's real weird. The set is honestly the only thing that hasn't been completely <laughs> yeah. torn down. It's, it's like the rest really of the weird. Is just boxes. Chaos. Like then. it just. I can see we've carved a path <laughs> through all the shit on the floor to walk through. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It's pretty uh, bad. But, all right, yeah, so we're talking about The Bees, starring John Saxon. Mm-hmm, the late John Saxon, yeah. R.I.P. Oh, man, he is so fun in this. God, yeah, he, he gives it his he all, He plays man. it 100% straight, and bless him for that, because it really makes this movie. Um, he, he carries the film. He does. This, this he, is a very bad movie. It's really bad. <laughs> but he's really good in it, as you know, good as he can be with mm-hmm. the insane dialogue that this movie gives him. Uh, but I want to do just a little kind of um, quick run through of why, because I mentioned the, the Swarm is another B movie. There's so much B stuff. From the 70s. Yeah. The 70s, everyone was terrified of bees. I didn't know this. And there's a reason for that, too. If anyone's listening to the pod who maybe was a kid in the 70s, it's my impression that you were raised to be terrified of bees. Like how kids in the 90s were afraid of tornadoes. For oh, some God, reason. I was so scared of tornadoes. I think because of, of Twister and stuff. Yeah. But the 70s version of that, I think, is sharks and bees. Okay. Sharks because of Jaws. Of course. But bees, not just because of these movies, but because... In real life, there was this fear that killer bees were going to come take over America. Uh, just hit, This is such. Um, this is kind of a, a demonstration of how media never changes. Like we kind of look at media now and we think like, oh man, everyone just reports the. You know, it's it's all sensationalism and it's just stuff to get clicks. But uh, it's kind of always been yeah. <laughs> like that. So back in the the fifties. Oh, hi, Lucy. (laughs) Oh, that was so cute. So in the 1950s in Brazil, which is where a lot of this movie takes place, that's where the movie starts off, is in Brazil. Uh, There's plans to introduce Africanized bees into the population Um, because so there's there's like different types of honeybees. European honeybees are the type that we kind of have in the Americas. Mm -hmm. Uh, But apparently the African honeybee was seen as like it's it's kind of the better bee like it's more i guess it it was like a harder working bee there are some things where they they thought okay it'll be a good idea to introduce these and see if we can maybe breed some hybrids and stuff but what happens is uh these africanized bees that get brought over accidentally get released and you're talking about this is real life this is real life yeah. this is not the movie this is real life I mean, it's this also is, the movie but. it is it, there's this also is covered in the movie. the beginning of this movie is actually kind of a recap of this but uh so what happens is brazil doesn't want it to look like this was their fault so they mm-hmm. blame it on the scientists uh and they say like that it's the scientists fault that these bees were released and also they did it on purpose and they've been creating franken bees and are releasing them and are purposely importing killer bees that can attack humans on command. And that's, like, what that's what scientists true. are they blaming it on? 
the um i think brazilian scientists oh yeah like the government just starts blaming because i think but wouldn't brazilian scientists be part of the brazilian no, government i think i well that's the thing is one of these scientists this is going into more detail than i thought we were going to but i i remember reading that one of the scientists who was blamed for this had some uh things to say about brazil's human rights violations and oh. stuff and so the government was like well we can use this as a way to kind of tarnish the students reputation like it's it's all very political and weird but interesting and again these are african bees and i think the difference is they i think they're more defensive it's not that they're more aggressive although that's kind of the narrative they're a more defensive species of bee so if you get close to their hive or annoy them they will attack you and they swarm okay so but because they're called they're called african they're africanized bees so people just assume they're more violent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't think that's where this podcast was going, right? No. <laughs> it's cool. Like, you just want to learn about bees <laughs> and everything is racist. So you just want to learn about the history of, of bumblebees. And it's like, surprise, there's a whole bunch of racist shit in here. So this movie calls them, in the beginning part that we alluded to, where it's talking about this kind of inspired by real life stuff, African honeybees. Yeah. Is that Okay, African mm-hmm. honeybees. Yes. And this says that they took over Brazil and that they then spread throughout the rest of South America, and then they're making their way through Mexico so, in, in perhaps a bee caravan. Yeah, exa- exactly. This is an election year. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a bee caravan. <laughs> but that's it's like, yeah, so there's this, because it's more interesting, right, to kind of paint these African bees as, oh, there are these aggressive killer bees. That's where the term killer bees that's, comes Yeah, from. that's what my question was. Yeah, this, they're calling this them. is the, the okay. invention of the term killer bees, which isn't really a thing. It's just that, again, these, these are more defensive. Bees. Are there killer bees? No. In real life? No, it's not a thing. There aren't bees that like will sting you and kill you? I never thought about it. I, I thought- mean, they. it's pretty rare. Like, it'll happen, but it's... You know, either you're allergic to them, like Macaulay Culkin and my girl. Yeah, it's it's not like they're there's just swarms of killer bees. So there aren't that... there aren't specific species of bees that have like super toxic stings. I don't think as so. as far as you know, no, no, that I, makes sense. But it's more like they're just, you know, if you if you fuck with them, which that's kind of just most animals <laughs> if you fuck with them they'll get mad and they'll yeah. swarm and that's how they protect themselves but yeah it's this idea that they're killer bees so that's when you start getting all these headlines uh they the bees start heading north so that's when the americans start getting really freaked out uh the united states starts running all these crazy stories about how there's a swarm of killer bees heading up from brazil that's yeah. coming to get everyone and that's why you start getting all these movies in the 70s about killer bees because everyone's fucking terrified terrified and this is even a headline i forget what paper this is from but it's just headline all caps killer bees are coming but then the sub headline is may damage crops because that's the whole danger it's not that they're swarming and they're going to come up to the united states and just sting people to death and that's Mm -hmm. just what they do all day it's more (laughs) like the threat that they pose is to it's there's agricultural consequences i see you know it's not like oh no they're going to come and kill everyone but of course, the the press just takes this and runs. And there's all these stories about how killer bees purposely attack the head and neck because they know that'll kill you faster. Just all kinds of complete fake wow. bullshit. Yeah, it's this it's this mass hysteria over. Are you looking at an article? About I am. It? I'm yeah. looking at the Wikipedia article for killer bee, and it, yeah, it's the Africanized bee, like you were saying. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, look, there's nothing about like a higher. There's, toxic. there's no they are <laughs> they're just more defensive right they're just you know yeah exactly but again and it's fascinating to think this is going into so you have the 70s wave of kind of b movies that's when all these stories uh come out in the news is the 70s heading into the early 80s and it's really interesting and depressing to realize there's this fear of these Africanized bees. And when you think of the politics going into the early 80s, you've got like the Willie Horton ad. Yeah. You've got welfare well, queens, early 90s, super predators. Yeah, or late 80s, I guess. But yeah, it's, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just the crime era. Yes, exactly. The this 70s is the, and 80s. The, yeah, the era of, oh my God, we need a law and order president. Mm. We need law and order leaders. And so that's really depressing. So, but so that's, it's nice that we can use bumblebees as a way to fuel a narrative 
that's convenient for some people. Anyway. The Killer Bees is also a collective nickname for affiliates of the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh, nice. So that's cool, though. <laughs> yeah. So that's the quick um, kind of rundown of... If you if you want to learn more about this weird hysteria, I took a lot of this research and used the sources from the Dollop podcast episode oh, yeah. about Killer Bees. It's very good. It's much more in-depth than I'm going to get here. But, yep. So that's... That's why there are bees. Uh, these bees movies... And the swarm, like we said, came out the same year. And I read, I didn't verify it independently, but that Warner Brothers, which distributed the swarm, paid the distributors of the bees money to push the release of this movie, the bees, until after the swarm came out so that the swarm would have a bigger opening. I don't think they were in danger. I mean, maybe a little bit, but they had Michael Caine in yeah. the swarm. And I think other big actors, whereas this, you know, we love Olivia John de Saxon. Havilland is in the swarm well, who is olivia de havilland oh okay uh yeah this one has john saxon who we love but i don't know how huge of a star he was and it is a mexican made film mm -hmm. the director is alfredo zacharias mexican made film although it's in english mm -hmm. uh john saxon john carradine you know american actors who are in this angel tompkins i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. american um this movie rules very 70s this is a treat for me i love 70s movies so 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 much especially this kind of 70s i just like i love a weird bad movie but there's something about a 70s bad movie that's particularly really good to me i don't know why there's something just the, just how everyone looks how it sounds it's so personally i love so many line deliveries. In oh this movie. my God. There are, I don't know, the line deliveries in this are incredible. Yeah. I've never, this might be a record holder for a movie with just some of the most baffling delivery choices of dialogue. That we just had to pause the movie. We rewound we this movie so a couple times, yes, and that doesn't happen did. often while we're watching stuff for the podcast, but even like the music in this. Oh, Do you man. have a favorite line delivery? I mean, I love the guy at the Rose Parade who we keep quoting. We rewound like five times. It looks like bees. It looks like bees. <laughs> it looks like bees. Uh, my personal favorite may be the kid who says, none of your goddamn business. Yeah. <laughs> no shit, the old guy's paying us to catch him some bees. Yeah, how much is he paying? None of your goddamn business. I love the guy who, it's at the airport and, uh, they're like making a deal with some dude to uh, steal bees. And he goes, you better not be cheating me, man. You better not be cheating me, man. I'm not. It's for sure. I'm not. It's for sure. I love that guy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so this this movie again. Like oh, no, no. You know what? Uh, I <laughs> the, Another great contender is when John Saxon is saying that a plan's coming together and Angel Tompkins <laughs> yes! is like, tell me there's got to be a catch. He's like, there is a catch. We can eliminate the killer bee without endangering any other species. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure we clapped. It just was so happy. You're going to have to include a lot of clips in this. I know. I'm, I'm realizing this is going to be a, a very clips. tight edit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh boy. So yeah, okay. This movie starts in Brazil. There's this dude, Franklin. He owns bees. Basically, it's it's the it's almost what happens in real life. He's like a scientist in Brazil, and these bees get loose after these two people. It's like a dad and his kid, I think, break in. There's a bee theft. They're trying to steal heist. honey, but they messed with the wrong bees. They messed with the wrong Instead bees. Instead of messing with honey bees, they mess with the killer bees. Killer bees. And let them loose, and the kid dies. Yeah, we kill a kid. I think a kid is the first casualty in this movie. He is, and then the, the dad carries him in Frankenstein it's style. It's, it's completely an homage to Frankenstein, because there's even angry villagers. They the, have pitchforks and torches. The and, villagers are angry, and Franklin's trying to calm them oh, down Jesus with broken Christ. English, being like, I know you know like devil bee. I know you know like devil bee. But I did not bring devil bees. I make devil bee good. Yeah, make you lots of money. Yeah. I wrote down that exact line. I know you know like devil bee. Oh, I wrote that as well, word yeah. for word. But then a lady throws a rock at his head. <laughs> and it's, yeah. I love how it's the old lady in the crowd who fucking whips him in yeah, the head. Yeah, they decide <laughs> fuck this guy and they burn down his house. But before this happens, we do get, and I thought this was a weird thing for him to say, but I guess it comes into play later. He's like, there's someone. 
someone at the agricultural department who's been skimming money. And I'm like, what is, why are we getting this a little bit of like bureaucratic intrigue? That comes into play later when I... this movie is like, how do we fill up another 25 minutes? Oh, we'll have something where the U.S. Department of Agriculture so good. is doing some weird money laundering scheme. There's a lot of business. In the, it's a lot of sitting <laughs> at long tables and everyone is smoking cigars and plotting how they can make money off of bees. Yeah. It's <laughs> so they burn this guy's house down and he dies. He dies, yeah. Right there. I forget if it's from the rioters or from the bees. I think it's a, a little bit of both. Things. And by the way, I love the effects of, of how they make it. Like there's bees. I'm pretty sure that it it's like garbage. styrofoam with fans i don't know i i, I don't i can't it just looks like a bunch of trash it looks like just pieces around. of trash that they they <laughs> threw in front of a fan and are just and then have the sound effects but i'm pretty sure there's at least one shot early on where they forget to sell it with the sound effects and you just see trash just flying trash, around yeah. and for some reason before franklin dies he puts his wife uh whose name is sandy this is angel tompkins he sticks her in like a i don't know if it's a safe room or something yeah but i'm pretty sure the house is on fire before <laughs> it, is, yeah. it so he <laughs> sticks her in there and then she's trapped in this yeah. room with a burning house I, like there's not any window she can crawl out of it's yeah <laughs> she, there's like a tiny little like yeah basement window that you can yeah, climb out she's of she's rescued later but um yeah i don't know what that was all about i don't know what that was all about anyway that guy is dead r.i.p mm -hmm. then we cut to an international meeting about i think bees. it's maybe the united nations is it? The, I mean, it's something. I don't know, but John Saxon's There's, there. He's a doctor. Yeah. He, and he's given a report, and he got all the countries there, and they're like, well, this sounds like a you problem, not an us yeah. problem. Because, what well, we have Cuba, Uganda. <laughs> I'm trying to think what other countries are there, but everyone's got a little placard in front. My favorite, though, is the guy from Cuba. Because yeah. <laughs> So what happens is John Saxon, so he's, he's telling them, look, there's these bees that escaped. I propose a hybrid bee, blah, blah, blah. We'll be able to keep up honey production, whatever. And then Cuba interjects and just is like... Oh, momento. What is wrong with sugar? Sugar uses the labor of the people for their own economic good. Fuck, honey. Sugar rules. <laughs> yeah. Sugar's awesome. <laughs> it reminds me of the old uh, uh, Justice League, League of Doom or whatever. The yeah, commercials that I would play. Yeah, I demand more toys. Exactly, but I'm just imagining Cuba being like, sugar, good. <laughs> yeah. Crush the super friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cuba's <laughs> Cuba definitely got screwed in this in this whole thing like cuba is just shaking its fists by the end of this movie we figured out how to tame the bees and get <laughs> along with the bees yeah their sugar production's about to be boned yeah and also then a fight breaks out everyone starts yelling at each other i don't know who someone just knocks someone just over throws the bees. a jar of bees on the <laughs> yeah. floor and bees get out and then the scene ends with bees just swarming this UN meeting. I can't tell if it was meant for that character to have accidentally done it or if that character was meant to have done it. I thought it, it was on I thought it was like a flashbang. It looks bang. purposeful. Like a, you know, like someone's leaving and they they throw the thing <laughs> and there's smoke, but it was just this dude throwing just a bees. jar of bees on the ground. Mm -hmm. just fuck it. Uh, oh, Angel boy. Tompkins gets into town. Yeah, and late she's... 70s New York, by the way. Amazing. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Real grimy. She gets in an elevator to go up to her apartment or to go to John Saxon's apartment. And there, these guys get in after her. And then they start, like, mugging her. And a crazy sax song starts <laughs> playing on the soundtrack. And then they try to, they, they like, push her, her out of the elevator and steal her bags. And they go to open her bags. And it's bees. There's bees in there. There's bees. <laughs> There's bees they in the elevator. They get attacked by bees. It's so funny that the the like inciting incident of this is oh no these bees escaped this Brazilian farm or whatever but there's so many other instances in this where bees are just carelessly released into Why is she I, carrying bees I guess in they her just purse? decided fuck it like once these bees got out in Brazil whatever if you bring them to New York and they get out it's fine and there's no consequences <laughs> for that one of the guys who tried mugging her and is getting attacked by these bees jumps through a fucking window like he's and marty genetti okay oh, yeah and then he gets hit by a car god this movie's so good it like it's 
you know, it's <laughs> it's really dumb and it's never boring. This, I mean, this we're not even like 15 minutes in. This dude gets hit by a car because of bees. <laughs> yeah. And then so she goes up to John Saxon's apartment. And John Saxon, if you need to know how he lives in this Holy movie, fuck. he's standing there making out with this chick with his front door wide open because yeah. she just walks in and they're like making out. And yeah. I love it. I guess to set this scene for who he is in this. So it's, it's the late 70s, which is important, I think, to remember. <laughs> um, his apartment, very New York. <laughs> city um really like kind of mod retro carpet everywhere mm-hmm. yeah he's got the door just open while he's making out with this chick he does martial arts and yoga oh dude she wakes up and he's doing yoga he's doing like warrior he, three it's great i love him in this it's he, so fucking good like this dude fucks for oh, sure oh yeah, yeah definitely amazing and uh yeah i think both women are taller than him or at least with heels on so, yeah. which is great it doesn't matter because he's fucking short, john hacks stand Saxon. a short king yeah. <laughs> and uh so this woman he's making out with gets jealous because angel tompkins is here and john saxon's like oh man your husband just died here you can stay with me and we'll do the un report tomorrow or whatever so this jealous lady goes and what does she do she opens the she bag opens of bees the bag because there's more bees left in there everyone's opening these bags of bees no one man. can resist opening the box of bees and i it's... think that's all this woman is in this movie yeah she leaves she gets stung and runs out <laughs> and then john saxon's like oh my god what's gonna happen and and uh angel tompkins is like well she'll probably be dead soon the bee that is since it stung your friend yeah. <laughs> Your friend can get fucked. I don't really care. (laughs) Hey, you want to talk about our sponsor this week? Gabby. Gabby. If you're looking for insurance, like like important, like homeowners insurance. Big stuff. Yeah, car insurance, all the big, scary, expensive things in your life. And like shopping for insurance is overwhelming. We are in the middle of doing just that with our move. Comparing stuff is a huge pain, especially if you just don't, like if you're just kind of on your own trying to figure it out, it's confusing. Yeah. And purposely so in some cases. So it's very helpful to have tools like Gabby, which will compare rates for you. If you're already paying insurance on something like a home or car, you can put in your current rate to see if there's somewhere you can get it cheaper. Yeah, because, you know, if you don't know about insurance, all you know are the commercials. It's like, do I go with Flo or do I go with the people who are on my side? I don't know. All I know is their ad campaigns. Gabby will tell you more than just what the ad campaigns are. Yeah, which is very helpful, Um, especially when, yeah, there's so many different places to get insurance and it's like maybe there's options you wouldn't have even thought of that if you compare rates with Gabby. There you go. So if you want to check your rate and it's free and also there's no obligation, like if you go to check your rate on Gabby, they're not going to like make you commit to anything. And it, they'll never sell your info. That's so good. No spam or robo calls. So I get spam. all Like I get so many robo calls. I, I don't know where they come from. Not Gabby. Yeah, they're not from Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take two minutes right now to see how much you can save on your car and homeowner's insurance. Go to Gabby. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash dead meat. And one more time, that's G-A-B-I dot com slash dead meat to check your rate and see how much you can save on insurance. So, okay, that's all for that lady. And I guess the rest of this movie, these two are an item. Yeah. It feels like she they, gets over her dead husband real she fast. Gets over, I mean, you would John if it's you're at, you're at late 70s John Saxon's apartment and her he husband lets you a- wear his karate outfit to bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Her husband had a cool voice, though. Her husband deep. was hot. He was a hot, he was a silver fox. For you sure. looked like a porn producer, though. Yeah, to be he real. did. He was a little boogie nights. Yeah, oh, for sure. That guy does coke a lot of it. Yeah, he he like is super successful the year this comes out, and then we flash forward five years, and he's like really sad and he's maybe just dead anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's already dead. Cocaine, but mm-hmm. yeah, he he's the type of dude. If you watched Mad Men, uh, Joan's husband by the end of that. Or the guy she's... I don't forget. I don't think they got married. The guy that she's... Greg? No, not Greg. The oh. older dude that she's dating. Oh, that guy. Who, the guy from Gerald's who Game. Intrig- what? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Gerald from Gerald's Game. And he introduces <laughs> her to cocaine. And it's like, That's welcome right. to the 70s, Joan. That's the vibe I get from that guy. What did she say? It feels like I just got good news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love, Joni. 
Oh, wait. Oh, d- well, we forgot that Angel Tompkins' uncle, Uncle Siggy, is John Carradine. He's another yes. doctor and is introduced at that morning scene after he's done yoga and ties her gi or whatever. And she has a weird line delivery. It's like, someone's at your door. Somebody's at your door. Someone's at your door. Like, it's like very and abrupt. And then <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Ziggy comes in. Yeah, how was it bees? He's got this very German accent. It's fake, right? It's extremely fake. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but, John Carradine of the famous Carradine Carradines. Clan. Yeah. Father of David Keith. and Robert. Yeah. Oh, wait. And Ro- yeah, there's a lot of Carradines. Who's Keith Carradine? There okay, here. Which I'm one's gonna... Kill Bill? That's uh 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 David. David Carradine. And then Robert Carradine's the dad in Lizzie McGuire slash the guy from Revenge of the Nerds. Uh huh. Who's Keith Carradine? Um, hold on. Keith Carradine is another actor. He's in Deadwood. Oh, is he also siblings to John? No, yes. Fuck. Siblings to David and Robert, <laughs> yeah. son of John. Uh, yes. Mhm. Okay. Any others we should know about? There's a lot of the, any, it's any cra- new gen Carradines. Well, I mean, I'm even looking at like. We can't. This is. I'm realizing how sprawling the Carradine family tree is in terms. Not even like other Carradines. It's just people they've married or kids. It's it's nuts. Okay. Anyway, but he started. He was like the. He started it all. Patriarch, I think. Yeah. At least as far as their entertainment. Yeah. No, he was definitely goes. American. I mean, he was in John Ford movies and stuff. He's mm-hmm. doing a crazy German accent in this. Honestly, I think he's adorable in this movie. He's he's old. He's old and But five years later after this, he would be in the howling, I think. Oh, was I think the howling was eighty three, and I oh, think he's shit. he's in that. Yeah. So he acted forever. Oh my god. Yeah, until he was ancient. <laughs> yeah, in nineteen eighty one. Oh, it was eighty one. Okay, so three years after this. All right. Still though. Yeah. <laughs> they all go to this meeting with, with a bunch business of people. business people. Just the Eve, business Evil community. business people, lobbyists. Holy shit. Everyone. We got ascots and plaid and cigars, velvet suits. Everything's brown. It's awesome. And they want to use these bees for money. They want in on bees. And they. They got to get in on the bee business. And of course, John and Angel warn them. Hey, these are these are a different kind of bee, and the businessmen just say, well, "Well, don't worry, we'll control them." Yes, they <laughs> business. <will. laughs> don't worry about it. We'll have them well under control. Yeah, so that's never gone wrong ever. Uh, but meanwhile, in in Brazil, I think what is this? The the business guy. The business guys send a business guy to convince the guy a guy who worked for Angel Tompkins and her husband to smuggle in some bees that's right and that's the when he's like you better not be fooling me I'm not it's for sure but uh R.I.P. that guy he tried to smuggle in bees on a plane I guess they, he does they stung him to death. he just dies in the process yeah. he has like a bee a belt, belt. A he's bee like belt. wearing a stealth bee belt to get <laughs> yeah. through security and then yeah. they find him dead yeah with bees I mean he, did, he technically did the job you're right <laughs> yeah I mean best case scenario for the business people they don't have to pay him now that's true and they would have had to before because it was for sure it was for sure exactly <laughs> but now there's a kind of a montage of bees just fucking people up on the beach yes a woman at a beach in a bathroom yeah she gets stung there's a guy who's just flailing around oh my god just, these shots are so wonderful yeah it's kind of just comped on bees swarms giant swarms yeah in the over sky people flailing wildly mm-hmm. it keeps cutting back and forth between these bee attacks and john saxon and angel tompkins and at one point the uh saxon and tompkins they're in like the green room or whatever a greenhouse or whatever and they're they're <laughs> around all these yeah, green room. yeah the bee green room where they relax before they their swarm Doritos or <laughs> yeah whatever. uh and they're like hanging out in this greenhouse and like angel it, okay Here's what I got to say about this movie overall is there's some loose dialogue. There are scenes where it seems like the director was like, okay, so you guys just got to like go uh, take down this hive or whatever. Okay. But what's our dialogue? Just make it up. There's okay? some improv it's fine. In this. There's lots of improv where people are talking over each other and it looks like they're doing that improv game uh, where you're warming up for classes and you're trying to do the mind meld where you're saying the same Ye- thing at the, at the same, same time. time. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that. But in one of these scenes where they're in this greenhouse, 
I guess they didn't know what to do. And Angel Tompkins has this little like broom and she just idly sweeps some bees <laughs> off like a shelf. And then John Sachs is like, all right, I think we can go. Yeah. There's a few times in this movie where John Saxon, who's clearly a fucking absolute pro, knows when the scene should be open. This is the thing they teach you in improv, right? Is when to end a scene and how to do it. And so you have John Saxon who is just the end of a couple scenes going, well, I guess we can go now. And then they just walk off screen and the ca- it doesn't cut. It's just them leaving the whatever room they're in. It's fucking awesome. This movie is fucking phenomenal. It's so good. Oh, yeah. man. There's a, God, there's a whole montage of shit still. There's this kid finds a bee cave. Yeah, what is up with that? I don't know what the bee cave is. The bee cave we come back to throughout the movie, and it's like lights going in and out. It looks like a Disney ride in there. Yeah, is this supposed to be BHQ? I think so. I think it's the literal hive mind of the bees, but I don't quite get where it is. I I don't know where it is. I guess it's wherever that kid walked in his ball just rolls into the frame and he's like goes yeah. to get his ball and now it's the bees balls yeah it's like when the, your frisbee goes in the neighbor's yard and they're like well this is mine now <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like okay there's a bee cave there's a shot of john carradine just watching bees on a tv monitor <laughs> well the tv monitors and this is <laughs> fucking choice too yeah man. there's a lot of good choices yeah like you said they're one of the the cameras they're using look like the willy wonka cameras that shrink mike tv <laughs> yeah they have a camera in this lab that they use they use to take bee footage with and yes it is it looks like they just borrowed that camera from willy wonka it's like silver and red it's absolutely ridiculous um yeah there's a couple making out getting attacked by bees but what happens is like this montage it'll be a, it's a scene that starts off with like the fucking entertainer or whatever playing it's like oh, saloon yeah. piano like, yeah it's like you're walking down main street in disneyland and it's yeah. the fucking piano playing there and it'd be, it's like someone riding a horse and then bees come in and there's synth music and well they use the same <laughs> fucking theme, B theme, I guess, throughout yeah. the movie so much. But it, you keep thinking, this like, okay, this is going to be the last vignette, but no, it cuts to like a... Do, 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 and then bees come in. You're right. There are horses that get attacked. At one point, they have just like inserts of people reacting to the swarm, and there's a woman doing the sign of a cross and a guy who faints like super over. hard. He's, he's, he stiffens up like a board and falls over. It's very funny. It's like silent film acting. Yeah. yeah. But then after these quick little scenes, we go to maybe my favorite seen all the, it's hard to say there's a lot of oh, favorites in you this, gonna pick? But wait but what is it this is there's an old man at yes the park. okay this is my favorite <laughs> <Okay>. scene <laughs> so there's we got to a scene where there's this old guy at the park he's like a cowboy it is the weirdest shit ever he's, he's got a cowboy hat and a bolo tie yeah th- th- it feels very los angeles this guy's like an old cowboy oh sitting God, in like the scene. park in like north hollywood or whatever <laughs> and is he there's these two kids who he says hey come here and he says i'll give you each uh, is it like a dollar for every bee that they collect? Or no, something? I think it's two dollars. It's just a flat Some, rate. I don't know. Two dollars. I don't know. But he's like, anyway, I'll give you, yeah, I'll dollar, pay dollar. You, I will pay you kids to go catch bees for me in this paper bag because I have, uh, what is it? Yeah, so his rheumatism, so his legs hurt, and apparently the way he treats it because it's <laughs> fucking America and. You can't just go to the doctor, man. You got to figure shit out on your own. And he figured out that if he lets bees sting his legs, it makes it feel better. I guess it numbs it. So he just tells these kids, go catch me bees. These kids are the worst kid actors Holy I've ever fuck, seen. These are, their dialogue. Um, None of your goddamn business. Yeah, they find a third kid who wants in on this bee, bee business. So this kid f- throws a fucking baseball at a nest of bees. And all I can think is, <laughs> like, that's a thousand dollars, you old fuck. <laughs> Uh, but they, the kids get some bees in a bag. They give them to him, and he, the guy, yeah, sure enough, pulls up his pant leg and just pours bees on it. It's very weird. The kids are just standing the kids there stand watching. around and watch, because fuck yeah, you would. If what some else old are you guy... doing? You don't have the internet. It's <laughs> right, the 70s. It's 1978. I'm going to watch this dude just pour bees on his leg. <laughs> Whatever. Sometimes the kids like to come up and play with my leg hair and watch me <laughs> sting my legs with bees. <laughs> 
God damn it. Dude, this would be a Joe Biden story. This like, you know, be. back back in the day, I was a lifeguard. And, you know, sometimes I would, my legs would start to hurt from doing lifeguard. So I'd ki- pay something. the kids $2. I'd give them a dollar at first and then a yeah. dollar when they nowadays, came Nowadays, it'd babies. probably be more like $5. But back then, a dollar for a B, pour them on my leg. The kids never seen anything like that before. Yeah. This is, oh my God, that's so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Anyway, that's uh, around this point is when that nest of bees that kid threw a baseball at starts to, like, catch up and swarms yeah, they, this old man. They uh they sting the old guy who fucking does a, a fall over the back of the bench he's sitting on, which is great. And then they sting a guy on a bike yeah. who drives his bike into some trash cans. <laughs> yeah, he does. He <laughs> Oh, man. And so, okay, it's full on bee invasion. There is a news story on the TV about how the U.S. is totally defenseless against bees, (laughs) uh, which is my favorite. (laughs) We've prepared for literally everything but this. (laughs) So this is when we're back to John Saxon and Angel. Oh, but don't forget there's a commercial after the news report for Royal Jelly. That's right. And they're like, it'd be like playing an ad for cigarettes after a report about lung cancer. Got him, Angel. Boom. So they, at this, like, honestly, I'll be real. I don't know what's happening half the time in this movie. But they go to, like, the middle of nowhere. And this is when I think they figure out that these pheromones can calm the bees no what they're they want to not calm them confuse them so that they kill their own queen i think i okay. think that's what they do with this hive which they note is next to giant radar dishes no, i don't know radar oh yeah radar, <laughs> radar dishes. station that's right i don't know why that's important. i don't know man but so they smoke these bees and then they spray pheromones on them and then they're like it's working the bees in this hive are killing their queen let's get back to the car and make out as this music on the soundtrack swells to a ear crunching volume and bees swarm all around the car (laughs) and the camera zooms in on us. It's amazing. Cut to the next best scene of the movie, the Rose Parade, parade. starting with a shot (laughs) of ex-president Gerald Ford. (laughs) Uncredited appearance on IMGB Gerald Ford as Gerald himself Ford <laughs> sitting on a fucking parade float yeah just out of office yep well if you don't yeah the rose parade and it's like a parade where all the floats are made of roses I would like to go I've never been but um yep bees get loose at the rose parade and that's when we get the best line in this whole thing <laughs> It looks like bees. And I thought, you know what? I was playing this for my stream earlier, so I got, I caught what he says before. What does he say? It's nothing exciting. All he says is, I've never seen anything like this before. It looks like bees. It looks like bees. <laughs> but I just couldn't help thinking that it, it, this must just be the rose parade every year. <laughs> you, you make a bunch of parade floats that are just made of roses. Bees are going to love that shit. That's the best day ever. It's just, they're all right there. It's all the flowers. You could possibly want just we're live from the Rose Parade. Oh, my God. <laughs> also, can I request that you put in the clip of the woman waving from the Alhambra float? Because yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, I <laughs> it, will. like does some weird zoom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This we also get movie. a zigzag wipe out of this scene because fuck it. There was a diamond wipe earlier that I think you were yeah. writing during. There's lots of crazy wipes, yeah, man. But the zigzag wipe was really, really yeah. special. Um, this is another business meeting and that's when the department of agriculture comes in and it's just, we must kill the bees, but our profits, it's just, we're arguing about business. Then we get some them style exposition on how bees work from John Saxon, who I think meets up with the department of agriculture to help figure out how to fix this whole thing. And this is when he comes up with the idea to, um, unleash a synthetic pheromone to, yeah confuse the bees but to make them mate with each other other? yeah instead of the queen so literally we're we're (laughs) releasing a pheromone to make the bees gay literally that's what's happening we're gonna make that's the solution we're gonna make all the bees gay and that's when he's like we can eliminate the killer bee without endangering any other species (laughs) so then john saxon finds john carradine fucking around with the computer and hey what's john carradine doing here hon he is learning the language of bees. The language that has to be metaphorical, right? 
um, no, he can literally <laughs> translate. He figured out how to get the computer to spit out translations of what the bees are saying. And also, so he's watching video footage of bees and then it cuts to, it's, it's like a footage of Angel Tompkins in the lab it's almost like the blooper reel of this yeah, she's like bee footage. Goofing around. And she's winking at the camera and blowing kisses. And I forget what kind of artificial thing they were talking about before, maybe the pheromones or whatever. Yeah. But John Saxon's like, nothing artificial about that. Yeah. <laughs> and so she gives a little kiss to the camera and John Saxon does a little kiss back. <laughs> and then this is when this scene takes a left turn. And I'm like, we can leave this scene anytime we want, please. Uh, John Carradine says... What? No, that was for me. After all, she's my niece. And then they start kind of arguing about who she's blowing kisses to. And she's standing there unseen by them this whole time. Yeah. And then she kisses both of them. Yeah. And little cheek smooshes. It's weird. And that scene could could have ended whenever it wanted to. There's uh there is a single moment of filmmaking that made me go, oh, that was pretty good. And it's a cut from a close up of bees to. Uh, Air Force planes, and I was like, that made me, that made me think something. Like the worker bees. Yeah. Yeah. To you I know, like, like Air Force jets. I like that there's because they're releasing all the pheromones and stuff from planes, and I like that there's a UN observer for the pheromones being released, <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure nothing screwy is going on. Yeah, we get all this footage of these jets and shit taking off and spraying shit, and I have to assume it is archival footage. That's all like. DDT in real life. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. not pheromones. It's like DDT and fucking Agent Orange or whatever the fuck. Yeah, but yeah. then there are also is, is this when they start crashing or is that no? Later? That's later. This is when no, because everything's going great right now because they're releasing pheromones and it seems to be working. And that's when John Saxon gets a call from President Jimmy Carter. That's right. You've done an excellent job, Doctor Norman, and I sincerely appreciate it. And please extend my congratulations to Dr. Hummel. What the fuck? We had to pause the movie because... We had to figure this, this out. This guy looks and sounds exactly like fucking Jimmy Carter. And I thought, is this Jimmy Carter? I thought that they Did actually got Jimmy call Carter. Call enough, like, does someone, you know, is someone a relative? Like, how the fuck? Because, like, if any president was would have agreed to be in your shitty bees in, movie... But you're, like, environmental yeah. movie about bees? It'd be Jimmy Carter. Yeah. So Maybe we, Gerald Ford. He I mean, he is technically in this. He is technically in this movie. But, like, you're not getting Nixon to be in your Bees movie. No. You're not getting Reagan. Do you Maybe think Johnson Carter. would have been in your Bees movie? No. <laughs> no, are you kidding? <laughs> I don't know. He would have told you to fucking <laughs> just suck his schlong <laughs> and then gone to take a shit uh, during his cabinet meeting. That's true. That's <laughs> real. Look it up. Um,. But we had to look up who the fuck is playing Jimmy Carter here. And it turns out it's this guy named Walt Hanna who became famous for a blip in time for looking exactly like I don't Jimmy think Carter. he's an actor. The article we found about him says he's a businessman. Yeah, but he just happens to look. And he said he didn't mind being mistaken for Jimmy Carter as long as it's profitable. Yeah. As long as it remains profitable. Yeah, I love that guy. He looks just fucking like it's him. so weird. It was it, weird. It, yeah, it was a good enough look like for us to be extremely confused. Yeah. Well, is this one? Is it Sac? No, Carradine goes to the Undersecretary of Agriculture. Yes, yeah. And we we're digging that subplot back up, and he's like, "I found out from uh, Angel Tompkins's late husband's work that the, someone in your department has been skimming or, funds." I'm sorry, yeah, it was the Department of Agriculture. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, it's the Department of Agriculture, and the guy's like, "Oh, thank who who else knows about this?" Pro tip, if you're telling someone about a conspiracy and they ask you who else knows don't, about it, don't, tell them, don't tell them about it and get the fuck out of there. Actually, a better idea, don't tell the person who is probably at the top of the conspiracy that you know about their conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. As soon as he's like, okay, so you and, and who else knows about this? Okay, uh-huh, these three people. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah, see you later. And then as soon as he got face drops, turns back to the phone. Picks up his giant phone, <laughs> giant phone. To, to order a hit on these three people. Yes, to order a hit on John oh, Carradine, like, John God Saxon, damn it, John and Angel Car Like, What a rookie move, dude. Yeah. You've been around long enough, Johnny. He has too much faith in... 
bureaucracy mm-hmm. and higher ups. It's it's no good. But uh, yeah, the, the, these hitmen come in. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now we're on hitmen. Hitmen are, are in the movie now. Uh, R.A.P. Uncle Ziggy. He gets shot. They fucking light up Ziggy, dude. Yeah. But as he's laying there dying, because because John Saxon, Angel Tompkins show up just the right time. Some good nasty face makeup on his stung up face. Yes. Yeah. Because bees hit- also, of course, get involved. Yeah. But before Uncle Ziggy dies, like as he's dying, he says, "You have to continue." learning how to talk to the bees they know everything they like they will tell you everything they can think and speak so the bees not only can they communicate basic things like hey there's uh another hive over or, hey there's flowers over no they can just straight they can comprehend politics apparently <laughs> yeah they can like they're as smart as people essentially oh also the face makeup was on the assassins yes yeah, who, yeah. who were stung to death uh john carradine was not stung he was shot as we said but survives long enough for them to get back and find him and then they're like trying to nurse him back to help and he's like i have too much blood loss <laughs> <laughs> uh no i have too much blood loss <laughs> Oh, and then, oh, but one of the assassins is still alive, and John Saxon gets into a karate dude, fight with him. he kicks the shit out of this dude. He does a high kick right into his face. I enjoy that we had the fact planted earlier that they he knows martial arts. and I just thought it was a weird detail, but no, no. John nope. Saxon goes absolutely ape shit on this assassin, you know, and same it's thing, so good. Same thing with the money laundering scheme. You think it's a weird yeah. thing. He comes back. This is a good script. Dude, my favorite thing, though, is John Saxon gets thrown through a window, and there's a glass shattering noise, but there's no glass. <laughs> in the window and he just goes through it like a frame <laughs> it's so fucking funny and then what he kills this guy by putting a box of bees on, on the face. guy's head yeah but as far as i can tell there's not a screen box. he just puts the box no there's a there's an opening on the side oh. it's like a box with an opening on the side so okay he just puts the opening right on this dude's face and kills him with bee stings yep uh so r.i.p that dude uh the bees then kill what, the businessman? Or is it the or agriculture is it the guy? Agriculture guy? I don't Roger know. That secretary. guy just falls out of a window. Yeah, though. he falls out. Like we're a we're seven throwing story a dummy window. onto the sidewalk. No, they don't even try to cut away. <laughs> They're like, here, it's a dummy. It's a dummy. You fucking know. <laughs> then there's now there's bees at the Capitol building. Uh, yeah, bees have, are going nuts. There's oh, this is when they scramble the jets, but the bees are in the jets or something. So we get footage of helicopters and jets crashing, and taking we're like, off and crashing. Well, wait, this movie's pretty low budget, so we're assuming this is archival footage. What are we, are we watching? People die. I know, right? Is this what a is, fucking snuff film I, now? Oh, I was like, are we watching Faces of Death on accident? Like the last <laughs> one looks like a crash test jet. I think a lot of these are just like test flights, like you know. I hope like so because one of these cars crashing and yeah, but that but that seems like I an expensive know, we, thing we, to you crash. You might actually watch people die in this. I'm not sure because there's like one of those two bladed helicopters. I forget what are they, and that just like takes off and then fucking just. I mean, it's expensive, but also, like, you know, we'll pay the military for just random shit to crash. I guess. That's how that works. It, we get to the United Nations. This is the end of the movie. Um, Everything is complete. It's peaked. We're just, it's peak bees. Bees everywhere. Oh, my God. They're going to take over the world. We can't even fly planes because they'll crash them. Uh, and we get a speech about pollution from John Saxon and how nature's defending itself. Again, we talked about that kind of theme in Frogs. Mm-hmm. Frogs is all about nature taking revenge. The 70s is totally a decade of these nature taking revenge movies. So even though this is like a reaction to that killer bee hysteria, we also get a little bit of the this is nature defending itself kind of kind of thing, which I like. Yeah, the guy, the some I, someone at the UN goes, this chap's gone bonk. <laughs> <laughs> and then bees attack the UN. There's bees flying around everywhere at the United Nations. They like hold it hostage. They hold it hostage. The very, very red United Nations. They're in this room that is just bright red. Because <laughs> is that what it looked like? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe it looked like that in the 70s. But John Saxon is like, all right, just, everyone calm down. You have to listen to what the bees have to say. Yeah. We have to all just listen to the bees. Because they need equal rights for bees because there are bees everywhere. There are trillions of bees, and we're just going to have to live with them as equals. Mm-hmm. Or or we're all going to die. 
It's kind of great. It's really the power of collective action, realizing there's a ton of you, damn it, and you can you can viz viz right into the UN and demand equal rights because there's more of, of you. I think he, he's like, and I know that because if we don't do it, we'll die. We'll do the right thing. Roll credits. And, yeah, <laughs> cut to credits. So did we do the right? Honestly, knowing the world probably not in this universe yeah there's probably some dr strange love in there who's like yeah no we'll, we'll take them out <laughs> yeah i think instead they just come up with plans to nuke the bees and then there's just like nuclear <laughs> holocaust and then there's no bees but there's also no people the yeah end. that's what i think happened in this movie this movie's so fucking good. Yeah. Big good recommend. Stuff. This and Frogs, dude. Oh, and th- this movie's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Was Frogs just also like, on yeah, YouTube? just like Frogs. Um, YouTube's this got a lot movie of good stuff. is on YouTube for free. So hopefully, me pointing that out doesn't get it taken down. But as of the time of this episode being released, this whole movie's on YouTube. I guess it's just another thing where it's like, nope, I guess nobody cares. I just cares. don't think anyone gives a shit. Whatever. Yeah. That's the bees. Yeah. Would have loved to watch The Swarm. We just, just don't have the time for it right long. now. Maybe Some one other day. Time, yeah. Because yeah. that one is also supposed to be incredibly bad. I know Michael Caine basically has disowned it at this point. He's like, it's I the mean, worst movie I've ever done. And I'm like, bro, you were in Jaws 4. Jaws 4. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yikes. <laughs> Big yikes, Michael. Um, cool. So that's it for this week. That's that. Yeah. I, mean, I think we have two more episodes that will be filmed here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Maybe those will be the last two creature features. Okay. That'll be the end of this era? Yeah, I think that's a... That that'll sounds be good. good. Yeah. And then podcast will be off a couple of weeks in late October. October. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. Just... We're settling into the new house. We are, yeah, like two weeks away from moving, maybe? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime... You can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebex, C R E B E C C, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Yep. Feel free to email deadmeatpod at gmail.com with comments, suggestions, feedback. And just a reminder we're closing down the P.O. box. Uh, please don't send us anything. Not to sound rude. We love it. We love everything we get. It's just, it's too much. And I, and it just makes me feel guilty when I can't respond to everything we get. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. End of an era. Mm hmm. Uh, cool. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Me Podcast. <laughs>